Hi everybody. Today we're going to be doing a lesson on how to make a dishcloth. Pretty simple, easy. The person who asked for the lesson uh, didn't mention a preference between one that you would use to wash your dishes with versus one you would use to dry the dishes with. So what I'm going to do is the first one I do today will be for washing the dishes and the one I post tomorrow or Saturday will be for drying the dishes. Uh, we'll do a crochet along for a bit and then you'll see the finished product at the end. We're not making a, an immense one for washing the dishes because you really don't need much more than this. Uh, we're going to be using Red Heart Scrubby, S-C-R-U-B-B-Y, yarn. I lost my label. Thank God I took a picture of it, and it's on my phone, so I'll remember. That's what I usually do when I start a project. I take a picture of the yarn, I take a picture of the label, and I keep them together. After I'm done, if I like the way the project comes out, I will save the picture and the yarn of the yarn and the label in my special folder for yarn projects and uh, that way I can buy it again if I don't like the way it is or I feel that the yarn was too difficult to work with then I can just delete it and not worry about it um, so as you can see this is a very textured yarn this is what makes it scrub it's a type of rayon and nylon mix um it tends to split at the end uh you can do one of two things you could take a match and burn the tip together my preference just make a little knot put it under pull it to the end and let that be the end of your your um your yarn so that it doesn't uns unspin as you're working with it the last thing you want with this one because it can be a bit fidgety okay so since we're making a small one tw I think uh, 24 chains across should be more than enough uh, by maybe 20 rows give or take we'll see how it ends up because I'm making up this pattern as we go along it's a little difficult when you make them up on the, on the on the fly, but we can do it. Okay, so lay it across, bring it around, make your cross. Bring your hook under and pull through. Makes it nice and easy. Okay, now once you get it here, don't pull this really, really tight. Because it's going to be a pain if you want to open or close your um your yarn up okay also this the yarn itself says to use a five and a half um millimeter hook this is a five and a half millimeter hook if you can see it this is five and a half i think you can just barely read it there okay this is a really big hook for this yarn if you look at it it totally devours it. I personally prefer the four and a half. I went down a full size. That's my preference. If you want to stick with the five and a half, that's fine. I like the four and a half because it, it sits nicely and it will pull through. Okay, so let's go on to our 24 chains. One, two, three four, five, six, seven, eight, excuse me, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, 18, 19, 20, 21, 
24. Okay, now if you look at it, finding your stitches in this is going to be a little hard. So we're only looking for the top loop and keeping it at a 24. So we're going to do two more. One, two to make the turn. Okay, so we go back one, two. This is the one we're going into. Can you see that top loop right there? I'm going to fish it right through. See it? That's one. You want to pull through all three. This is a, uh, a half double crochet. So we're going to do one loop, two loops, three loops, all at once. Okay? This will be a nice tight weave to be able to scrub with. Okay? These also make really good body scrubbies. This is one. Loop it over. Pull it through. One. Push it through. Loop it over. Pull it over. All three. Boom, boom, boom. This is four. Through. Cross it over. One, two, three. It's a little tight. Try to keep your loops loose. Leave plenty of room. Okay. Go into the top. First loop you find. Okay. Pull it through. One, two, three. Let's see. Now, we have the first bar, which was the turn. Now you feel one, two, three, four, five stitches. Remember, we're trying to keep 24 bars. Okay. So you'll feel the 24 stitches. <clears throat> Four. This is number five, if you can see it right there. Number five. Boink. Sorry if I'm making you all wobbly. This is up. Oh, that's a nice big one. You can see right through that one. Six. Pull it through all three. Cross over. Put it in, pull it out, cross over again, go through all three. That's your half double crochet. Cross over, put it in, pull it out, cross over again, go through all three. That uh, should be ten. Let's see. This is number one. That's the, the arch up. One, two, three, four. Five, six, seven, eight, nine. One more. And this is ten. Okay. This is our tenth one. Eleven. See it? Nice and slow and easy. Twelve. Here we go. In, through, cross over. Oh, that's a little tight. I'm leaning on my yarn. Make it a little loose again. Two, two, two. One, two, three. There it goes. There's more well, 13. Fourteen. Fifteen. Sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen. Twenty, Twenty-one, twenty-two, 
23 and our last one Ooh. up there last one is 24 okay now let's go up to one two to climb the ladder okay turn it around you you're going up the ladder you gonna go for the first oh, crossover go in the first loop one oops pull it through almost made a double crochet I almost did a boo-boo. Okay, here we go. Right in there. Okay. Two. Three. Am I staying in screen? No, I'm not. Uh -huh. Sorry about that. Four. five now I realize this may be a little bit difficult I'm saying go 20 rows up so this is number six going in next because you're gonna have to keep track of two different sets of rows in a type of yarn that's not gonna want to let you I have a suggestion hold that for a moment we're gonna pause let me get my little sack my goodie bag on my keychain amongst everything else I keep a couple of little hook marker uh, row markers just stitch markers like this cute little safety pen style because heaven forbid you should be out and not be able to count your rows especially when you're doing something and you just want to Continue your crochet. Okay. Do I have any more on the bottom? I don't think so. I think that's it. Yep, that's it for now. Okay. So, as I create an earthquake on my little table, when you go up, this is your second row. If you want, you can do a leapfrog where you go two. Okay, you mark two. So, this is going to mark your even sides. The blue one will mark your odds, odd size. So you can count up using your your, row, your stitch marker. So this way you can keep track of how many stitches you've done. If you have enough, like I, right now, all I have is the two. So I'll do odd and even. If you have enough, every row, the top of the stitch, you put a stitch marker. And you'll go row one, row two, row three, row four. All the way up to the end of the, the garment or fabric. Um, makes life a little easier. You don't have to worry about counting two things at the same time. Or if you put it down and you go to take care of the kids, you go back to it and you look at it and go, Dang, I got to start all over again because you got to sit there and count up your rows. This makes life a little bit easier. Uh, some people use a stitch, a, a row clicker that has the 1 through 10 on it. I just like putting my little roast, my row, my stitch markers in it and going from there. Okay? Because it makes it easier. And also, you can pull this apart enough to see through to see what's at the other end. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, seven stitches. Seven. Okay. Eight. Nine. Ten. Oops. Ten. Eleven. Twelve. Ah, I did a poop. That's why it looked so tall. I think this is the first one. Here it is. Okay. Do you notice what I did? I changed the stitch on us. 
One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay, we're right back where we were supposed to be. I stopped making this, the uh, half double crochet. All of a sudden I decided we were doing double crochets. That's usually because double crochets are the most common, commonly used stitch. So it's like the first thing you think of when you think of crocheting. Single crochet, then double crochet. Very rarely do you use a half double unless you're doing something fancy. Or something you want dense, that you want really tight weave on. It gives it a lot of body. So now number eight. Let's remember to pull up through all three. There we go. Nine. Pull up through all three. Ten. Eleven. Just so you know, I'm leaving. I don't really do much editing. Twelve. Because I want you to realize that you're not the only one making mistakes. I've been crocheting for a really long time. And I've been crocheting since I was nine or ten. I've been crocheting a long time. And I still make mistakes. Don't feel like you're the only one who messes up a stitch or forgets your count or just can't get a, a particular project to be even on the ends. I've been fighting with that, I think, since my first day, since my aunt started teaching me. Here we go. Another three. Here we are. Here we go. Through all three. 14, I think this is 14. We're going to have to double check my count. Only 10 more to go. Let's see. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. That was one off. 16. Me and my glasses. 17. And 20. And 24 now 24 to keep the edge straight I go in one side out the other and then pull it through this helps keep the edge in line you see how straight it comes out one and two as long as you keep at the end of the row doing that you should be fine okay in through the top this is one okay I'm going to do the 20 rows because this is basically everything that we're doing and I will come back to you once they're finished so I can show you how we're going to finish off with this particular yarn and what the finished product will look like. I'll see you probably in about an hour. It takes me about an hour to do 20 rows. I'm a little lazy. Okay, see you in a little bit. Bye-bye. So here we are. I have hit the point where I'm at the end. A little bit of straightening out here, if you see it. Um, bring this back this way. And now I'm going to do my final row. There 
There we go. One, two, one. Remember, it's the three, two, through the three loops. I'm calling my new room the Fortress of Solitude in honor of my sister and the fact that it's the only room I can be alone in. Okay. Because I have to close the door. Otherwise, everybody walks in and starts talking. Here we go. This one. This one. This one. This one. Get in there. There it is. Okay. Here we come. Down to the last seven stitches. Let's go. Two. Oh, maybe it's a few more than seven. Three. Four, five, six, seven, eight, get in there, eight, nine, and ten. In the last stitch. There we go. Oops. Bring it around. Okay. Now I'm going to pull it. I'm going to make a loop so that you can hang the dishcloth to let it drip dry if you want to. Or you can just use it to. You can make it or not. It's up to you. I'm taking out my markers. Because I already counted out my rows. So, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Just a simple chain. Go right back around into where you came out of. Okay. Catch it with the hook. Oh, sorry about that. Let me show you again. Here's your row of 10. Take this, put it in right about where you came out of it, pull it through, and close off your, oops, close off the end of your work. Just like that. One extra loop, just to be able to hold things together. A nice snip, boop and pull through nice and tight now you've got a a pretty stable hook that you can use hook loop that you can use to hang it on a hook or to just let it drip dry on your faucet because you know you don't want to get funky this can be washed over and over again obviously and dried in the dryer it's a fast easy project to make I'm just tying in my ends here. Sometimes I use the, the needle, a sewing needle. Other times I just go in and out of the loops as I find them, like this. And then once it's through a few of them, I just snip it off. See what I mean by it frays really easy? Because of that, I'm gonna pull it a little bit, tie a knot in this. Let's try that again tie a knot. I can't wait to get my nails done. My nails look all funky. Okay. Tie a knot at the end as best I can so things stay together. 
Let's see, did it stay? Okay, pull it back up, pull it back in. Let's pull that last loop through. I won't even bother cutting it short because it started to fray in since I put the, the, whatcha call it on it. That was that. Okay, so I didn't even use really a half of the ball. It's a little less than half. Okay, this is our cloth. Good for doing the dishes, good for scrubbing your back, scrubbing your face, whichever you want to use it for. And it's got a little something to hang so that when you put it, it'll hang on the, uh, on the side. That's a dish cloth for scrubbing the dishes or yourself. Tomorrow, I will put together a pattern for a dish towel to dry the dishes with or to have hang it off your your um your draw poles and use it to dry your hands with while you're cooking or whatever um i'll probably be using my aunt mary's pattern for that god bless her um but yeah i hope you guys have a good night uh i had a great time throwing this project together, and uh, we'll see you soon. Have bye-bye. Oh, yeah.